Hello everyone and welcome back. It's good to see y'all. Welcome to our third of three developer live streams to talk about all the cool stuff coming up with Destiny 2 Into the Light. Uh, my name's Andy, I work on the social media team here at Bungie and we've got an awesome set of, of uh, topics to go ahead and cover today. But first things first, we, want to win it. we wanted to go ahead and remind you guys of one clarification we made. For starters, all of the weapons in the Brave Arsenal will now be releasing on April 30th. So just as a quick reminder, all of that weapon, all those weapons will be available for you to farm over the course of Onslaught. Uh, there's many ways with which you can go about it. For starters, obviously, you can go ahead and attune yourself to a weapon, so whether you want to go ahead and grab that recluse that you've had your eye on for so long, you've got the opportunity to go ahead and do that uh, over the course of Onslaught. Uh, also, there's going to be the chest up by Shax as well, so you can go ahead and farm some additional rolls there, but worry not, you'll have plenty of chances to dive in, grab the weapons you want, whether it be through our site's quest lines or otherwise, uh, those opportunities will be wide open and available. But we have a whole new set of topics to discuss today, uh, including some reprise exotic missions, a look at the PvP map pack, and a couple more details at the end that we'll go ahead and share with you in just a bit. Uh, but as usual, it won't just be me talking through it, so let's go ahead and tell you about the wonderful folks I have here just to my left, some incredible developers here at Bungie. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the gentleman here to my left, friend of the show, one and only Mr. Tom Farnsworth, senior design lead here at Bungie. Tom, welcome back. I'm back, I keep bringing me back. I know, it's, come on, you're the best, we, can't, we couldn't possibly <laughs> let you go. No, I, I, of course, I'm the creative lead for Into the Light, yeah. but we're yeah, really here to talk about all the great work the team has done and these individuals here uh, with us today. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some exotic missions, yes. uh, some new rewards associated with them, uh, and some PvP stuff. So let's let's dive in. Let's yeah. let's talk to everybody else here. Great stuff. We also have now sitting just next to Tom as well. We have Rob Adams, one of the art directors here at Bungie, uh, and kind of the person who helped come up with the concept of Into the Light. Rob, welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me, excited Absolutely. to be here. Yeah, no, it's good to have you. We have a lot of fun stuff. We were talking before the show about a lot of cool stuff. We'll have plenty of fun details to dive into here in just a little bit. Uh, and of course, the one and only Willie Chang, activity designer here at Bungie. Uh, how are you doing, Willie? Good morning. I'm doing well. Uh, for the folks at home that may not be familiar with you or your work, uh, what do you do here at Bungie, if you don't mind my asking? I'm an activity designer uh, for Into the Light. I worked on the Zero Hour Reprise. Excellent. Well, with that, we uh, we may as well start diving into the show at hand. We have a lot of cool stuff to start with. Uh, in addition to, like we mentioned, some awesome reprise exotic missions, including the Whisper and Zero Hour, which will both uh, feature, pardon me, craftable versions of each weapon. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and start at the top with the Whisper. Uh, we've had a chance to go ahead and kind of pull back the curtain and look behind the scenes a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and start from the very top. Uh, Rob, you were there when it all started. Why did Bungie make the Whisper to begin with? Well, I think in the first few months of D2, I want to say like the first three to five months, we felt like there weren't enough secrets in the game. It felt like the game was pretty well known, mm -hmm. you know, and, and kind of like discovered. Mm -hmm. And it just needed some big secret to be found by the players. And we thought that that would excite uh, our community quite a bit. Like, it would it would just go over really well. We, we hoped it would, at least. Yeah. And we had all this nostalgia for the Vault of Glass and Black Spindle. I mean, one day we were just sitting in a conference room and we we're like, what if we just made another Black Spindle mission, but we made it a lot bigger, Yeah. right? Yeah. Speaking of, uh, we've got here on screen uh, kind of some, if we can call it as such, yeah. original concept art, uh -huh. you'd say, for the Whisper? Yeah, it's concept art. Yeah, can you tell us a little <laughs> bit about what we're looking at here? Uh, so, well, that's actually the very first whiteboard drawing when we got all excited and we ran and found a conference room and we started, you know, drawing what this could do, yeah. what we would want to build. And really, this kind of shows some of the magic uh, formula. You know, like we mm -hmm. we had a a contract, really that we we called it a contract, and mm -hmm. and this was an unspoken agreement between us as devs and the hardcore, super engaged players. Yeah. And it really was, if you can pass a test where your mind is going to be tested, mm -hmm. your fighting, right? Yeah. Uh, is going to be tested, and you're going to be able to pass these tests, right? Yeah. Your movement, your mind, your fighting. Yeah. If you can get past these tests, you're going to be rewarded with great power. Yeah. And that was the contract. And so one of the other things we did, and you can see it up here in the uh, upper left, yeah. is there's a little crack, and then the path continues. Yeah. And, you know, that's the red herring. And so we thought, well, rather than lead players by the nose and have a bunch of narrative and and make it really obvious what you're supposed to do, yeah. what if they get into this mysterious place and they don't know what to do? Mm -hmm. And when they go down the path that they think is right, it's not. Yeah. You know, and they go blazing right past the actual opening. Yeah. And so we knew that that, or we, we were pretty confident that that was gonna appeal 
to the hardcore players because once they learned the path, right. they could then bring their friends in and show them, and then we would have the videos, you yeah. know, with the walkthroughs, and it, it would just appeal to. Yeah. to As they let their friends people. go first that mm -hmm. first time to watch yeah. them fall off the yeah, edge yeah, yeah. helplessly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> also, too, is you know to kind of focus a little bit more on the art direction as well. Uh, I think to put it lightly, the the vibe in the whispers pretty intense. Can you tell us what it was like, kind of imagining that space and bringing it to life? Yeah, well, we went, we wanted this like intense mystery vibe, right? The mystery of I'm on I'm on IO and I found this place that I've never seen, I didn't know existed. Yeah. And where does it go, right? And that mystery, and also the feeling of dread. Yeah. <laughs> and so. A lot of that. Yeah, and and it's easy to get a vibe if you listen to one type of music, for example. Right. So we were watching Stranger Things and listening to the soundtrack, and I got really into you know building this this traversal puzzle, it has a really consistent vibe because it was just one type of music that was listened to for the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, speaks to my hotline Miami fan yeah, yeah. side, honestly. <laughs> yeah. uh, also too, is we've got uh, another picture as well of the uh, the infamously titled Green Room as well. Um, there was a really cool anecdote you had kind of about the development process of this. What was it like bringing this kind of very iconic, I guess I'd say, Destiny Room to life? Yeah, well this this is funny because there was this thing that we wanted to try, right? Mm -hmm. Make it Make a room that has a trap in the center, that if you mess up, you end up going down the trap and you, you get punished for it. And yeah. when you get out, you end up back in the room. And it just happens again and again and again. And there's all these different ways that you try to find your way out of this room. Right. So the test was to make a tiny version of this, like one quarter scale. And we brought it into the play test lab. Yeah. We had Cosmo and Dylan. We had a bunch of our testers and designers in there. Yeah. And I just waited, right? And I waited to, for someone to find the hidden shortcut Right? Like, what would happen when they, what's gonna happen when they find that hidden shortcut? Yeah. And so the first person that found it, they just screamed and started laughing, and then everybody started finding it. And based on that reaction, we knew we had something good, and then it got scaled up into what you see here. And back to the vibe thing again. Yeah. When this got built, all I did was listen to Black Sabbath, the first six albums, like over and over. Yeah. <laughs> so it just has that really, really consistent vibe all the way through. And that's just a, a trick that the whole yeah. team uses to get. Uh, a theme yep. or a vibe oh, to right, be we have, consistent. We're going to go ahead also too and start to jump in the activity so we can see this uh, this vibe up close and personal as well. But uh, here we are. We're we're back in the whisper as well. Uh, really quickly too, off the top, um, <clears throat> Willie. When it comes to you know bringing these encounters forward, bringing them to the modern era of Destiny, what were some of the bigger challenges that you'd say you have to overcome in order to make sure that they were fitting for today's sandbox? Yeah, so sandbox-wise, players nowadays pack a lot more power than they did before. Uh, people can clear entire rooms of ads from these activities back when uh, they were in their original state, Yeah, um, just like extremely quickly. So we had to beef up the number of combatants that are in these encounters, and uh, later on I might talk more about uh, additional tuning that I've done on them. Totally, yeah, yeah, we can come back to that in a second, but uh, I think also too, really quickly, you know, back in the day, there was a, a very bespoke way of getting into the Whisper. You had yeah. to kind of hang out on IO, wait for this mysterious portal to come up, yep. um, but we've, we've made some changes to that as well, I think you were mentioning before we hopped on the air. Oh yeah, I mean, I was a victim of it, right? We had the public event with the RNG, and you had right. to wait for the right one, and you know, yeah. one, one time I tried to take a coworker through on a Saturday, and we yeah. spent like seven hours just yeah. trying to get a few runs because of, because of the public event. And right. And that we just had to change that, right? Mm. And the team was excited about having a new, you know, benefactor, a new character that you you go and talk to. So you'll be talking to Eris Morn. Eris Morn is going to tell you some really cool stuff. I don't want to give it away. Smart. Yeah. But you know, you're not going to have to deal with the, the frustrating uh, trigger to get in anymore. Excellent. Mm -hmm. oh, that's always good to hear. Giving a chance, especially you know, if people are going to come come back in here multiple times as yeah. they kind of build up their their craftable exotics. Obviously, a pretty key component. Uh, also, too, is you know I think it's it's worth mentioning that that this is this has undergone more changes than just the combat landscape. Yeah. Uh, for the veteran players who are coming in here, folks like myself that have mm -hmm. maybe kind of had a lot of this committed to memory, um, how have you gone ahead and made sure that it's fresh for those veteran guardians out there? Yeah. Well, the 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 goal was, how is this going to be exactly what you just said, right? Like if I if I've played this 10, 15, 20 times, I've guided people through. Maybe I've, I've made a video about how to get through here. How's it gonna speak to me, right? Like right. what's gonna be cool for me to go in and do it again? And, and that was the goal that the team had. And it, when we knew we were gonna do this, I made my own list, right? Yeah. Like I was like, we're gonna change this, we're gonna move that, we're gonna, and I was really excited about it. Yeah. So, Tom, so Tom was in this meeting. So we, I show up and there's like you know, 15, 20 people mm -hmm. and they presented this whole plan 
and I had my list all ready to go and I was gonna wait. I was gonna listen to all the proposal and everything and then yeah. start giving <laughs> ideas and stuff. And when they finally finished presenting this plan for how to update this thing, I just deleted my list because it was <laughs> like, it was way bigger and way cooler than anything that I'd come up with. Yeah. It was just so neat to see like a fresh take on it. So if you think you know where the chests are, if you think you know where all the secrets are, if you think you know where all the surprises are, yeah. you don't because they're different. All those old guides and all the old walkthroughs, they're gonna have to be remade. Even though I'll just give one away, when you first get in, there's that first secret chest room on the right. Right. The anomaly has taken care of that. It's not there anymore. Anomaly has yeah. taken care of it. There's so more surprises. <laughs> to the to the Steam guide writers, to the game facts writers, to mm. the folks making their YouTube videos, a revision two is going to be in order sometime soon. Oh yeah. By the sounds of it. Yeah. That's really exciting. Uh, also, too, is is um, you know, are there any other changes that you guys are particularly excited about when it comes to the Whisper? We're going to move on to Zero Hour here in a little bit, but um, you know, before we conclude our journey here, uh, Willie, actually on your side, are there any changes in particular that you're excited about with this this updated version? I'm excited about the way that the boss fight has changed yeah. for this activity. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll leave that to folks to go ahead and discover on their own uh, when it comes to the launch day of, of the Whisper. But uh, <clears throat> yes, this is a first look uh, for the folks out there who are, are looking to go ahead and make sure that they, they're ready on day one to go ahead and add another craftable exotic into their, their collection. Uh, obviously, the Whisper is going to be there for you, but we don't want to spoil all of it. You'll have it in your hands soon enough. Uh, and also, some folks out there have already had a chance to play it, so we don't want to go ahead and uncover too many of the mysteries. Uh, up next, we've also got, obviously, another iconic one, Zero Hour. Uh, let's start from the top. Can you explain, uh, Rob, the concept behind Trevor? You've obviously gotten homage to him on your I have my I have my shirt, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you tell us a <laughs> yeah, little bit about what this original concept was? Uh, so, so Trevor was really inspired by this. There's this Japanese game show called Takeshi's Castle, and it's been around a while. And it's great because it has all these physical challenges and people getting knocked down or you know flipped over and stuff and mm. trying to get through things and and there's just a lot of comparisons to what we try to do in Destiny and we've we've borrowed from that show and shows like it for a long time for cool ideas and they have this one bit where the contestants try to get up this hill and there's this big fake boulder that comes down the hill <laughs> yeah right? and there's these little like side uh, rooms you know like little pockets that right. they can try to get into. And so we were like, man, if we had something like that in the middle of this mission, that would be amazing, yeah. right? Like, and so we had this thing that we called, there, we there it is. Yeah, we got some concept art up on the yeah. screen now. So we had this thing that we called the hazard for a long time. The hazard is going to get you, right? And it's going to come down at you. And on the left, you can see the original whiteboard drawing of what this could look like. <laughs> and there you see the hill with the slots. Yeah. We basically lifted off of Takeshi's castle. Yeah. And then that evolved into what we eventually made as a maze, yeah. right? And then there's the very first drawing of Trevor. And on the right, you can see a concept art by one of our artists named Fan Gao. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at it, it had a bit of a vacuum cleaner look. You know, it didn't quite nail the fear. Sure. You know, which, which yeah. we might talk about in a second here. Oh, yeah. So okay. then on the far right, you can see the centipede legs and the light and the, the final revision. That's pretty close to how Trevor ended up. Yeah, yeah it definitely it, it feels terrifyingly familiar in some ways, we'll say. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, and I, you know, kind of <laughs> while we're on the other <laughs> the legs, job, which uh, brings up honestly another great example I'd love to touch on as well is, um, you know, as, as a guardian myself, we've we've felt gods. We've fought yeah. some of the most difficult battles in the universe, whether it's against our fellow guardian or, or the many foes that set foot inside the solar system. Uh, when it comes to Trevor in particular, it elicits a very primal, sincere fear. How did you guys kind of elicit that from players who have obviously conquered so much? Well, I think there's this like satisfaction from scaring people that's inherent in everybody. Like yeah. we've all scared somebody, I think at some point, it's just super fun, right? Yep. So what could, what could we do in Destiny to actually make people feel fear? And, and the team was super excited about how to try to tackle that problem. Because you're right, right? Like, Guardians can just jump away, and we kill everything, and we're just uh, gods. Invisible and dodge away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to do it, yeah. So how do you, how do you scare uh, our players in the game, right? So the first step was drop you in a maze. Yeah. Uh, there's something in there that you cannot kill. You can't jump mm -hmm. up because the ceiling is just above your, your head, right? Yeah. So those were the first three things. This thing is faster than you. Yeah. So you know you're in there with something that you can't kill that can go faster than you. And then of course we did the uh, centipede bottom, yeah. which I have this particular phobia of centipedes. Like, 
The fact that you took something that is such a fear <laughs> and me, put it yeah. front and center, honestly, like it's yeah. commendable. I watched this video like a week ago where this this dude takes a giant centipede and lets it bite him on the arm. Why would you do that to your? I don't know. I almost passed out like watching this. Video. <laughs> so I, t uh, centipedes terrify me. And so I thought the bottom of this thing just has to be sideways centipede legs that are made out of metal and they just grind you up when it catches you. Mm -hmm. And then the final piece of the, um, the formula for this thing really was to put a super bright light on it that would shine as a shadow caster across your, like past your body so you can see your own shadow as you're trying to get away. Yeah. And uh, honestly, like a lot of it was inspired by the anxiety that I feel and I think folks on the team also felt when we talked about like the trope of a subway that's coming around the corner. Right. Right. So you just, see that it's finite always, yeah. just clock running out it's in front coming. of you. Yep. Yeah. You see the light coming and then you see the thing. Yeah. And so that really helped uh, us figure out how to make yeah. this thing as, as freaky as this possible. Time, no Indiana Jones laying down on the tracks hoping for the best here. Yeah, no. Not a chance, yeah, no. no. <laughs> Trevor's going to chew you up, honestly. Uh, so also, we're, we found ourselves now. We're in the beginning stages here of the Whisper we can see on screen. Um, Willie, we kind of touched on this briefly over the course of, uh, of the Whisper, uh, but can you tell us a little bit about what it was like sort of reinventing these combat spaces and these encounters for Guardians in a modern sandbox, especially those that are going to have the Brave arsenal available to them? Yeah, so uh, just now you saw a brig in this encounter, uh, which there wasn't one before. Um, I think there's there's the desire to keep the, the soul of the activity, which is that, oh, there's time pressure um, on me to finish this activity quickly, and also I'm uh, going up against powerful enemies that are trying to stop me from doing that. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to make sure that the combat still felt challenging, even in today's sandbox, so we added some new combatants yeah. to the brig. Um, and we also just increased the number of combatants, period, yeah. um, so that players had more to do with their <laughs> more diverse and deadly tools. Yeah. <clears throat> Guardians have plenty of those available to them. Uh, when you were developing these combat spaces as well, were there any moments where you really thought to yourself, like, all right, this is it. Like, we've really centered in on what was great about this mission originally, but this is going to be appropriately challenging for today's Guardians. Yeah, I think the when we when we play tested it and, uh, you know, we had everybody load up with uh, their like new maneuverability tools, their swords, their grapples mm -hmm. uh, to go through the activity and then we were expecting that like oh people are gonna breeze through this like it's nothing like the original 20 minute timer has to uh, become something else but really all of that translated over pretty well like the individual yeah. sections are uh, self-contained enough that like you can't uh, bypass too many things by just using one new tool. Sure. Um, the whole thing sort of still felt like zero hour, yeah. even with your new toolbox. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Even even with, uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump forward here a little bit as well, using our dev tools to take a look at Trevor as well. So for the folks out there that wanna reinstill that fear in themselves, now's a brief chance to check it out. Uh, also too, is we're in a world where, you know, there's strand grapples, there's shatter skating. Uh, when it came to kind of redesigning these activities or even making, I guess, alterations more appropriately on these activities, um, you know, with one like Trevor, for example, what was the challenge that you kind of had to overcome with those new movement tools in addition to the combat tools that players have available to them? Yeah, I guess uh, philosophically, I want to make sure that if people were specking into being highly maneuverable, then I honor that choice and say, yeah, you're highly maneuverable. Like maybe you're in this hallway with Trevor. Uh, I don't want to be ground up by these centipede legs, <laughs> so I'm going to sword skate through this so that I can have a little bit of speed on Trevor. Um, but like, you know, you still can't invalidate the challenge entirely. Trevor will still kill you if you mistime those. Mm. So they're just like different expressions of how you want to tackle these challenges, and none of those expressions like fully throw these challenges out the window. Yeah, actually, something too that I'm seeing pop up in chat here uh, is the mention of the timer. So for starters, there's also, this is normal difficulty, yes. there's also legend, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about like any updates to the timers in these no. missions as well? So, uh, Willie, feel free to have him correct me if I'm wrong, but on normal, it's 40 minutes because we want to give players a little bit extra time, especially sure. if you're new, you want this to be accessible, everyone get in there and get the, 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 the experience. But a lot of our kind of like, uh, like quests, content, and secrets are in the legend version, which has a 20 minute timer. Yes. Correct? Yep. Interesting. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you, chat. 
Uh, in addition to you know these these other updates you've made, are there anything or any any changes you've made in particular that you're excited about that you're comfortable talking about it here, or is it just a, you want players to dive in and find out for themselves? Yeah, the so the whole secret setup for Zero Hour is different. Um, so you know previously we had key cards; those have been replaced by another secret system that you'll just have to find out more about for Perfect. yourself. <laughs> and you know, I'm also proud of the boss fight in this That's activity. right, yeah, we'll hold that one close to the vest. Players will have a chance mm -hmm. to see that on their own and see Willie's hard work uh, in person very soon. Uh, now, as we mentioned at the top of the show as well, there's gonna be craftable versions of these exotics and we're gonna check them out. But there was one more example uh, that I wanted to ask you about, Rob, in particular. Uh, there was some discussion briefly about the acronym that is Trevor. Can you tell us what that stands for? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, but yeah. I, had to, I had to open my phone because it's like impossible to remember that. <laughs> it, we got we all have our yeah. notes. Yeah, it's part of the game. <clears throat> so, yeah. So early on, the team we re we just realized we had to figure out an acronym for this because we loved the name Trevor because it was paradoxical. Mm -hmm. I went to school with a kid named Trevor who was the nicest kid in the entire school, <laughs> just nice to everybody to yeah. all, right? So I always thought like Trevor is just the nicest name, and so paradoxically, here's this evil thing named Trevor, and we thought it was hilarious. <laughs> But Sorry. once we often numericized, is that a word? Yeah. Once we made that, we had to come up with the acronym. So the one that I had was Tracking Robotic Three Vectored Reducer. Because <laughs> it reduces, right, Tom? It's like it reduces you, yeah. Uh, but that was our internal acronym. Yeah. And so when we went to GuardianCon and did, we did like a, a fly through or like a walk through. Yeah. Um, and so we, uh, the community team, uh, thought that we should let the fans of Guardian Con yeah. decide what the actual acronym for Trevor was. And so we had like That's the five different examples and my tracking robotic was in there. Oh right? yeah. That's one of the things I was like, please pick <clears throat> mine, please pick mine. Yeah. And so at the end, <clears throat> what they decided on, and they decided by loud applause and, and it was like very obvious yeah. this is what they wanted. The committee had Oh yeah, it's like very obvious. Yeah. What they decided on was Tame Relaxed Triple Vac Roommate. <laughs> so that's the official name for Trevor. That's it, it's codified. Acronym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much to the, gen the, to the denizens of GCX. Thank you very much for your hard work in letting us know uh, exactly what yeah. Trevor should be called. That's, that's really cool. I wish I'd been there for that. Uh, okay, now we're taking a quick look uh, at the craftable exotics as well. We're gonna go ahead and start with Whisper of the Worm. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about what, you know, players who are kind of go gonna go ahead and facilitate their own play style or wanna build a Whisper all to their own, what are they gonna have to look forward to with all this? Yeah, even before we get into the, the crafting, like, like I've got my notes here from Chris Proctor, so. You're the man himself. Grow. Yeah, he's right. sitting on my Sporting. shoulder, helping me out here. Um, and we wanted to retain the, the fantasy of both these weapons, of both of Whisper and of Outbreak. And, and you know, Whisper, it's about, it's a hard hitting precision weapon where you're in yeah. the backfield. Like, and if you land your crits, you're rewarded and you can sustain a ton of damage on a, on a boss or enemies with a large critical area. Ogres will be felled. O ogres will be felled, the servitors stand Oh, don't say a chance, yeah. <laughs> um, and then with Outbreak, it's the fantasy is all about spreading the, the plague of C Siva Nanites. Certainly. Um, and we'll be able to get to that in a, in a minute. But so I think we're looking at Whisper right now. Yeah, so specifically with Whisper um, and, and Outbreak, for both of them, with both these crafted weapons, they'll both have a, a craftable barrel, uh, magazine, traits, and stock options. Um, the barrel and magazine options will let you like really push the stats around. Mm -hmm. um, like so, you'll be able to have like a max stability whisper if you want. Uh, yeah. Um, which was like you know really advantageous for a weapon that's about this like hitting repeated critical hits. Certainly. Uh, in an area, um, and then specifically for the perks on whisper and the, both the perks on whisper and outbreak are things that by engaging in our secrets week over week and and both of these exotic missions, uh, you'll be able to unlock them. Um, and for Whisper, it starts off with Mulligan, uh, which is the, the classic perk where if you miss your shots, they get refunded. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, upgrade it, you can get field prep, which will give you more shots, which equals more damage. Yeah. Uh, and then there's no distractions, which will allow you to you know, keep uh, under, under fire, hold your aim on your target better. Exactly. And there's also enlightened action, which is for more forgiving reloads. So there's, I think, a lot of options for players of different play styles and different skill levels Perfect. there. Yeah. Um, and then just with the kind of the cherry on top there with Whisper is that it's getting a reserves bump. So it's gonna go from right. 18 
uh, in reserve to 24 in reserve. Uh, so you're gonna have a ton of ammo to be, just like make it a sustained damage monster, yeah. uh, which is, is, is super exciting. So ultra precise players like myself who never miss a shot <laughs> will have even more. Why are you guys laughing? Why are you, <laughs> is that, why is that funny? Uh, no, that's really exciting. We also, so we have Whisper of the Worm yep. uh, in addition to Outbreak Perfected now joining yep. the pool of craftable exotic weapons. Uh, let's take a quick look at Outbreak as well while we're here hanging out in the Enclave. Um, Tom, kind of, you know, second verse, same as the first, same question. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the perks and updates that players will have available to them with uh, their options to, to craft Outbreak Perfected? Yep, and so in addition to barrels and mags, it has uh, its, its classic outlaw perk is back. So you get your fast reloads on final blows, which works which really well about yeah. without break. It's all about also landing precision hits to, 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 to either uh, spawn nanites or to kill enemies and spawn nanites and spread that SIVA energy yeah. around. Spread the plague. Spread the plague. Um, and then the, the second one though that we've at, we're added here is rapid hit, which plays right into that. So like you, sure. you land your precision shots, you get more stability, you get faster reloads. Uh, then another new one is rewind, uh, re uh, rewind rounds. Say it's hard for me to say. Fast, yeah. yeah, try it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, which refills your reserves from uh, it, it, to minimize your reload. So, like, if you're hitting shots, you're just going to keep getting more ammo, which yeah. is really like, kind of interesting. Uh, perpetual motion machine, no perpetual yeah. death machine. So, yeah, it's like, do you want? Yeah, do you want the reloads? Or you just want to keep shooting. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a head seeker, which I think maybe for PvP or for certain for certain play styles where like you're, you're less you know focused on your critical shots. That's that's something to think about as well. Right. Um, in terms of catalysts. Um, if you already have them, yeah. you're golden. You can craft those. If you don't, you play the legend version of Whisper and Zero Hour, and you'll have a chance to get them. Very cool. So that's still in there. And then, as I mentioned, for unlocking these these new intrinsic perks that you can slot in, yeah. there'll be like a three week uh, mini quest line that rolls into the secrets for each of these. And Whisper is coming at launch with End of Light. Exciting. And Zero Hour is coming in May. Perfect, okay. So yeah. it'll be a chance to go ahead and sink your teeth into Zero Hour for a while before you go ahead and change your attention and start unlocking another another uh, one of the, the storied exotics of old. Yeah. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that there are more than just the craftable weapons available as rewards in these missions. There's some tried and true ships. Now, we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but as someone who still to this day wears a thousand wings. You and me. Yeah, yeah like yeah. We, we, we know the feeling of getting that ship and finally having that I was there moment. Uh, the ships are making a return as well, isn't that correct? Yeah. Okay, so for, for both Whisper and for Zero Hour, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're coming back. Is it the exact same ship, or are there going to be changes on them? No, these are actually new assets, right? They're, they're new ships, so yeah. they won't be the same. They won't, they won't sit in the same spot in your inventory. Mm. And they are updated to look really cool and new, and I think they're exciting, especially the, we took the old scrap drifter ship that yeah. was, <clears throat> I think, uh, not really loved particularly by the community because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was it was literally scrapped together from spare parts to right. get built, and so we did a really nice pass on that. So it um, it's inspired by the look of Outbreak Perfected, and I, I think it looks great. I think the community is going to love it. Yeah. And then we have the Whisper Ship Thousand Wings. Uh, it's got a new design, uh, so you'll still have your old Thousand Wings, mm -hmm. and. If you have that equipped, players are going to know that you're OG and that mm -hmm. you got it back in the day. Oh, yeah. And the new one is going to look like the new one, so there won't be any mistaking the old one for the new one. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So for the players who want to go ahead and continue to build up their collections, yeah. there's a chance to go ahead and dive back in. Yeah. Maybe they weren't there originally, but they yeah. want to go ahead and join the Thousand Wings Club to a degree. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> so there'll be a chance to go ahead and unlock those, uh, unlock those as well. Um, Excellent. Well, I think we are actually about at the point of the show. We're going to go ahead and get ready to rotate over the PvP map pack. But for starters, let's go ahead and make sure we thank our incredible team of playtesters here, uh, going ahead and showing off the missions for us. Ashley, Peyton, and Michael, uh, thank you all so much. Uh, very much. There we go. We're getting some waves from the backstage. Uh, <clears throat> thank you all so much for the time. And of course, uh, Willie, I think this is unfortunately the time. Now we bid you adieu to go ahead and transition into thank the, uh, the PvP map pack. See you soon. Awesome. Willie, thank you so much. All right, we are now uh, joined by another member of the Bungie development team, a staff artist here who has helped made many of the PvP maps that you've also known and loved, the one and only Mr. Cooley Callahan. Cooley, welcome to the show, man. Guys. How's it going? <clears throat> Good to see you. Thanks for having me Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It's been so long. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it has. It's been a minute. Look at us, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, full circle. Yeah. Now, uh, we were talking a little bit before the show about Cooley. I'm going to go ahead and do us all a favor and put Cooley on the spot to a degree. Rob, we were talking a bit about Cooley's history. We were. Here. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about the man sitting just to your left, the contributions he's made to the PvP pantheon? Yeah, well, one of the things that was really important for us was to make sure that the strike team was stacked. 
that we had the best designers on the strike team. Mm -hmm. And so Cooley is certainly one of those. He's a six-year veteran of the PvP team who shipped over 11 maps. Yeah. A lot of them are fan favorites, and I'm not going to steal any more Cooley's thunder. I'll just let him talk <laughs> yeah. about some of that. Yeah, it's uh, not, not everyone's a banger. I mean, there's definitely some maps <laughs> that people would want some words with me. Uh, but I <laughs> We'll think, save that for later, but what, what are yeah, some of the bangers? Yeah, just come find me. Uh, it's, um, I think, you know, uh, Burning Shrine, yeah. which is now Burnout, you know, it's such a classic map. It's um, a trial's favorite. And then Midtown is another map that turned out really well. We built that for Countdown, but um, you know, I was just chatting with another Destiny fan at the dog park the other day, talking about how well that map supports all of the different uh, engagement ranges, mm -hmm. um, which is definitely something that we try to do. We try to create places for players to use their their favorite tools. Yeah. Now with the the maps, we're going to be looking at three of them today with kind of a, a primary focus on, you were mentioning earlier, I think it was the 3v3 kind of competitive side of things was sort of a focus for these maps. Absolutely. Yeah. I think early on, um, a lot of the direction that we got was we wanted to bolster that competitive uh, gameplay experience um, with new maps, tweaks to the modifiers of some of the modes. And so we, in our play testing, really focused on the competitive playlist and um, really centered and put those uh, experiences at the forefront. Um, and then, you know, all Destiny maps, you know, can, can suit a variety of modes. So we also made sure they worked elsewhere. But for the most part, yeah. we really did want to provide um, new experiences and just breathe a little bit of new life into the higher, yeah. maybe a little bit sweatier uh, <laughs> gameplay. So we know you were staring directly at me when you said sweaty, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll let it go for now. Uh, you know, actually, uh, briefly too on that topic before we kind of go into the guided tour of these maps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having had so much time to sort of be a part of building the the you know, the tapestry that so much of our PvP happens on, what were some of the key lessons that you've kind of taken away from having built those maps and seen them go through everything from trials to quick play and and mm -hmm. you know bringing forward those lessons into these maps? Yeah, I think one thing that is always at the forefront of our minds is, um, you know, trying to strike that balance between, you know, providing the playground for players to express themselves and express their guardian and their play style. Mm -hmm. So a lot of verticality, a lot of movement. Um, and then so and then balancing that with making sure players understand where they're getting shot from and, you know, creating a satisfying PVP engagement that doesn't, um, that doesn't leave players, you know, cursing the map or, sure. um, you know, feeling like they they don't understand why they died. So yeah. we want to make sure that players have, um, you know, the the we want to provide a choice for players that's you know always available to them to mm -hmm. um, to riff and to work with their team to you know use the map to their advantage. So yeah. it's a it's a balancing like a complex gameplay space um, that allows a lot of movement and freedom with without you know. Um, opening it up so much that you're not understanding, like, geez, I can get shot from so many different places. Certainly. Um, so we, we really, um, it's, a, it's a little bit of back and forth. We'll, we'll open it up, we'll try some things. Yeah. Um, especially this time around, we, we tried some stuff and, and got into the weeds a little bit. Yeah. But um, I think that's all part of the discovery process of finding, of finding the gameplay that we want to create. And so we go a little further, maybe too far in the, in the openness and Swiss cheese and then um, we bring it back and, and make it a little bit more focused and really dial in the, the engagements that we want. That's awesome. I mean, speaking of getting in the weeds, there's, there's no time like the present. Uh, shall, shall we go ahead and dive on in? Absolutely. Excellent. Cool. Diving on in. Uh, all right, we got the first of three maps to go ahead and show off. This is the, uh, we, have, we have one on Europa, one on Neo Muna, and then one on one of the pyramid ships in Essence, I believe is the That's name right. of the location. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first one. This is here on Europa. Uh, Cooley, can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here today or where we are? Yes, so this map is called Eventide Labs, and this is a long forgotten human colony research outpost on Europa. Five um, minutes left. And Keep uh, it, it just so happens that Aramis has chosen this location as a refueling station for her catch. So. Here you'll see, um, you know, perched just above the horizon is her catch in the in the in the skybox with, you know, it's getting hooked up and um, we have a servitor over here that's um, hooked up to the catch to provide that ether that the elixir need, um, and so we really wanted to situate the maps in the universe and you know draw on that deep destiny lore, um, but yeah, we definitely have. Um, a presence of fallen here, set amongst the um, abandoned human. Uh, you know, ice encrusted structures of the past, which has been a really fun um, environment to work on. We definitely want to bring in, 
as many new palettes as possible because you know there's so much great um, environment art content and the palettes are, are really cool and we want to we want to use those in in PvP wherever we can just to you know the different palettes have different character that yeah. leads to different gameplay spaces. Uh, also, you know, when it comes to kind of finding these maps to place in the world, Rob, uh, you know, having kind of looking at th these through an artistic lens, uh, what were some of the challenges or even kind of exciting opportunities potentially of finding, you know, new places for these maps to live in the more modern era of Destiny that we've been experiencing more recently? Well, we really wanted to make sure that when we do an update like this, you know, it's it's a major refresh to the to the map rotator, right? Mm -hmm. Like we were adding quite a bit of variety here. We wanted to make sure that we had three distinctly different places and places that players haven't seen a bunch of times. So right. fortunately, we had these uh, available to us. And I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at it again now. I mean, I, I'm not getting sick of looking at this. The team does such a good job. It's gorgeous. This is, I mean, one of the cool things is just how purposeful everything feels in the world. You know, yeah. the art team always pushes it so far where it really feels like you're walking into a truly recently defunct, mm -hmm. you know, human colony or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and the frozen world of Europa, I mean, they all, they all have their advantages for, for PvP, but uh, the, the frozen ice walls of Europa are just perfect for yeah. multiplayer, and I'm sure Cooley's going to talk about this a bunch. Yeah, actually, also to Cooley, if you wouldn't yeah. mind, uh, you know, I, as, as people who have heard me talk too much about Destiny PvP would know, Dead Man's Tale and I get along a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit maybe about some of the sight lines or opportunities that I'll have to maybe rack up some additional kills as I dive into this map the first time? Totally, totally. If, if long range is your thing, um, this spot out here is definitely the place for you. Um, there's one spawn that happens uh, for uh, one team over by C and then one over by A. And so in these competitive modes, if you've got an objective out here, this sight line is really important to lock down. So this is the like, this is a spot where you're going to have two teams poking uh, and peeking each other um, and then, you know, rushing over here to try to get to this this zone and lock it down. And yeah. um, if you're you know rolling with that, that long range kit, you can hang back and sort of lock down this airspace here so that you can provide cover and, and maybe support your team from being uh, harassed down on this point. God, this and is then fantastic. We also have sort of this uh, the sight line in the middle, which will be pretty fun. It's definitely going to be a race to um, for each player uh, or each team to kind of get to this spot and, and lock down the this sort of uh, portal here to ensure that you can uh, push into this space and kind of control the middle. But um, as you can see, there's you know, lots of ways for players to come in and flank. So if you're holding the space, you'll really not want to be here for too long unless you've got the support to do it. Yeah. Um, Make sure you throw those grenade, grenades right off of the rip, basically, mm -hmm. when you're coming out of spawn to try and yep. conquer that territory as best you can. Yeah, one of the things I love about these ice caves is, um, you know, it provides a lot of opportunity for grenades, like trip mines, and to bounce things off of the, the back of the, of the walls. And the, the shapes here are just really fun to, to play with. Awesome. All right, so this is uh, one of three maps. Let's go ahead and prepare to go ahead and move on to the next one here really quickly. We've got uh, coming up next, Neomuna uh, as well. So finding a place, you know, on Neomuna, obviously, that that's, makes sense for PvP probably seems pretty natural, honestly, given just like how rich and vibrant and exciting of a place it is. Uh, what was it like, you know, even starting from an artistic standpoint on this map, Rob? This was a really exciting map for the team. Um, it's a shopping slash entertainment center for the Exos on Neomuna. And, yeah. um, you know, so there's a lot of really fun uh, decoration and the spaces have a lot of character to them. There's a lot of recognizable things, um, you know, human scale things that, you know, look relatable. And yeah. we don't always get that in, in all of our palettes. And so um, this is also an opportunity for us to have a really clean architectural mm. map that has a lot of um, you know, crisp edges and, um, you know, very uh, flat floors. So all of the, definitely the more competitive players and the sort of the more PvP uh, diehards, um, they really take to this map and it's an instant hit. Um, people are, you know, just right away pleased with, you know, how readable the map is. It's one of those maps that you play a couple times and you're, you, you get it, like you understand that it's all about this the center atrium room that is really open and kind of you know has this big pit in the middle and then yeah. um, there's this area down here which is uh, where a lot of objectives spawn and there's um, some special ammo down here but then there's also um, this place over here where the, oh, the heavy ammo spawns yep. and you know players will oftentimes just pop up here to do a quick check and, and maybe like try to get a 
a cheeky kill on somebody who's maybe running uh, from cover to cover, but yeah. you can't hang out here for very long because you've got so many different angles at which you can um, get shot from. But that's that's kind of like that balance of what I was talking about before. Like we we want to provide that, but we want to make sure that um, it's not too powerful, or um, you know, it's it's still it's a risk reward, right? You're making a trade off, and um, you know the the players who are using the map well and who understand the map will um, you know be able to use it to their advantage. Yeah, actually also too to kind of focus on the readability. Uh, I remember overhearing some discussions with, with you designers talking about the clean zone in PVP. Can okay. you tell us a little bit about what that is and how it kind of helped inform the design of this map? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the clean zone is something that, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of developers uh, really use to um, sort of create this space for uh, uh, the player to pop, right, to like really stand out from the environment. And so for us, it's about where the player's head height is. And this map is you know, just one of the examples of how it, it can really provide for a good PvP experience to um, have this sort of mark on the wall where you can kind of expect players to, to reside in. Yeah. Um, Till they jump around and, and strand, suspend you in the air, and you're just left there cursing <laughs> the heavens for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Maybe I'm speaking on my own behalf. <laughs> uh, this is this is looking fantastic. Yeah, this is, I will say, one of the maps that having done a little bit of playtesting myself, um, I still have to give you credit for perhaps one of the most diabolical heavy weapon spawns, or heavy ammo <laughs> spawns, rather, I should see, uh, in any PvP map. Like, the sheer amount of risk-reward that goes into just making your way safely, or so you think, out to that particular territory. Right. Um, you know, as you guys were even building that balance in of, of these consumables on the map, Cooley, what was it like sort of having that, that process evolve or, or grow? Yeah. Um... You know, typically when we start laying out a map, we, we just kind of start with control because it's a, it's a good base point. It's, it requires three you know, very well-defined combat pockets that have an objective in them. Um, but then from there, we start mapping out the other objectives that might exist on a map, like the heavy ammo point. And I think we've kind of gravitated more toward having special ammo live next to some of the other objectives on the map, so you're not constantly having to make a choice of where, where should I go. Um, but we, we kind of map those things out, and um, it's, it's sort of a formula. There's, there's definitely a um, sort of a order of operations, so to speak, of you start with you know, these big strokes, um, you go to the next stage and, and start making sure that you've got you know, space and combat pockets for you know, maybe Dominion or you know, some, some other game modes, and um, things just kind of fall into place from there. Excellent. All right, and we've also got we got one more map to check out as well uh, for all the fine folks at home. We're going to continue our guided tour, and we're going to make our way over to Essence, to one of the pyramid ships, to check out the final PvP map that will be releasing in this pack. Uh, as we're flying in, I, I got to I gotta give you guys credit. Like, the space that exists inside those pyramid ships that's being terraformed by the Traveler looks just absolutely incredible. But this is the first time you guys have had a chance to really flex your muscles and build a PvP map out here. Um, you know, Rob, just to start from your perspective as we load in, <clears throat> what was it like developing this, you know, playground for Guardians that's kind of so deep in the enemy's backyard? I think it was really tough. You yeah. know, like, the, I remember there were quite a few iterations of this map, and I know Cooley's going to go into more detail, but, like, from a high level... It's a, a pretty inherently noisy palette. You know, Cooley was talking about the clean zone. Mm. There's some palettes in the game that are, that are just very visually noisy. So the geometry is noisy. They create a lot of shadow and a lot of highlights just yeah. by the geometry itself. And then the textures, the shaders that are on the geometry, those can be noisy. Yeah. And then there's the clutter of the palette. So when you, when you have uh, an environment with a lot of entropy and there's just mm -hmm. rubble everywhere, there's like garbage strewn around or, or plants hanging down, right. like we, we often do in Destiny, we have to declutter. Some of like the European <laughs> dead zone maps, for example, yeah. are highly cluttered. And so this was an example of one of those um, fairly entropic, high clutter palettes yeah. that the team had to kind of wrangle into shape. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure Cooley's going to talk about that process because it was quite a process. Yeah. Actually, yeah, Cooley, I'd love to g continue and just start there. You know, taking this space on a pyramid ship and kind of making it suitable for a PvP map. What was, what was that process like from your perspective, kind of from more of a design side? Yeah, it's, it's again it, a process of back and forth. Um, you know, we start with Mass Out, and Mass Out is the simplest and cleanest a map will ever be. And, uh, you know, from there we start um, developing the spatial character of, of the map. And one of the things we like to ask ourselves is, what is this place? 
and even with um, a more abstract palette like um, the Essence ship, um, it's, it's worth asking that question because we can leverage spatial archetypes that just kind of like naturally resonate with people. So um, like here we have in this map, we have sort of these dueling huts or these yeah. dueling, dueling ziggurats and inside of them is this artifact or shrine. So maybe this is like a, maybe this part of the ship is a, a collection of mysterious artifacts that the witness has collected. Um, and so we, we lean on those things to, to give a little bit of rhyme and reason to a space that otherwise is completely abstract. Um, and that, that is also really useful for us in terms of we can make any, any kind of space we want. Like we're not limited by architectural constraints, but um, you know, it, can be, it can be tough sometimes to, to orient pay, players in the map um, when you don't have things like doors or you know, <laughs> like TVs or, or um, you know, any sort of you know, human scale architectural pieces that um, kind of clue you in, so yeah. yeah. It's also too is uh, yeah, I remember we were talking a little bit before the show, Rob, even about you know what it was like from a design standpoint and bringing in external testers to try these maps uh -huh. out for the first time. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and kind of as you I think phrased it, discovering your own blind spots? Yeah, well we've done this before for years really, and yeah. we did it again here, and it was I think really successful because you know it was two days they ran through these maps when they were still in development. They yeah. weren't too far enough along where we couldn't make some some pivots that we needed to. Yeah. And they found a lot of stuff. I mean, we for this map, for example, we thought it was in a pretty good place. Yeah. And and a lot of things were called out. They didn't pull any punches. They were honest and clear and, and constructive with the feedback. And yeah. it wasn't super easy to hear at all. But sure. You know, when the when the team listened to it, and we we took tons of notes. And it was also about. I mean, they gave feedback on, on our sandbox as well. Yeah. But <clears throat> lots and lots of map feedback. It was incredibly useful. And, you know, just another lesson in what we don't see. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just, it's so valuable to do that. And these, I can't say who they were, but they're very well known community yeah. players. Some folks in chat, who knows? But <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, you know we, you we really were careful about who we brought in because we wanted people that would be very pragmatic. Mm. You know, they weren't interested in their own, you know, YouTube monetization strategy or how, how they particularly make content. They wanted the game to be in a great place. They wanted PvP to be in a great place for, for the community and for Destiny. Absolutely. Right? And so, and they were carefully selected that way and great communicators who could articulate the feedback. They could really speak to what they were experiencing and, yeah. and what we could do to fix what they were experiencing. Yeah. yeah. And it, man, I'd like, Cooley can, can probably um, say what he thinks about it too, but yeah. I was just blown away by yeah. How valuable that was, and uh, we definitely want to keep doing that. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah Cooley, can you tell us a little bit more yeah. about that experience on your side as well? Totally. I mean, it's so fun to, like, those are some of my favorite moments when we can get a bunch of, um, you know, super fans from the community in and show them work in progress stuff, and they can actually give us real actionable feedback that we take back to the, back to our desks and talk about it, and we, you know, we, we discuss how can we, um, you know, sort of take their feedback and move forward. And um, this is this content is for them in, in, yeah. a, in a big way, right? Like we want, we need their approval. Like we we absolutely, you know, that's our that's our that's our mark. That's our our goal is to um, you know create content that they're going to love playing and that they're excited to play and that their communities are going to get excited to play and and sort of learn together and, and build strategies for. Um, you know, that's. That's the funnest part of the job. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, Cooley on, on your side in general, what are you most excited for for players to experience once this gets out into the world with Into the Light? Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see these maps rotate into trials. I'm excited for players to have a totally new trials experience that, you know, is going to be a, a sort of a an experience of discovery of of these new spaces and of new strategies and. Um, for players to also, you know, the the meta of isn't really formed yet. I mean, like we 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 sort of know how the map plays, but it's always a, a fun surprise to see in the wild um, just how the map ends up uh, sorting out and and what people end up doing. And um, you know, we're we're really looking forward to just watching what happens. Yeah. I mean, I, I count myself among the many that are excited to go ahead and dive on in, having more playgrounds to go ahead and dive on in on trials, no matter what the case is, to maybe try and go ahead and actually get some more competitive rank. Uh, Cooley, thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through these today. We really appreciate it. Anytime, my pleasure.
Excellent. And uh, all right, well, we'll go ahead and use that as a moment to conclude the uh, the quick tour of as well of the PVP maps. Uh, we got a quick question from chat from Jake Asor asking about, uh, are we going to get a playlist or mode? It'll be just these new maps during Into the Light. And the answer is yes. When they launch on May 7th, we'll have a 3v3 playlist to go ahead and talk just about these items. Uh, I'd rather let you play just those maps. Rather, we're talking about them today. <laughs> They're all going to be playing them very shortly. Uh, all right. Well, that uh, so far wraps up the first two segments of our show. But we've got, as I mentioned at the top, a few more announcements for you as well. So you may have heard us mention the word Pantheon in the TWID last week, uh, or even on the show here last week potentially as well. We have got a brand new uh, raid-oriented, a raid boss gauntlet, rather, starting on April 30th. Now, there will be more information about this in an upcoming TWID. You'll have more details to dig into shortly. But you will have the Pantheon coming up, where you'll have an opportunity to face grueling raid bosses in a weekly challenge with escalating difficulties and rewards. Now, this is a chance for you to go ahead and rally your clan or the perfect fire team with Fireteam Finder, if you're able to track them down, to go ahead and track down those exotics, adept weapons, any emblems you may not have gotten your hands on. But we have more details for that in the coming weeks. Keep an eye on the TWID, Cosmo, and the community team. Thank you for your hard work putting that together. Two, uh, when you dive on in on, uh, on April 9th, uh, actually, rather, before we get there, I'm sorry, we will have the opportunity to also, you'll have the opportunity to get a title through your course of Into the Light as well. So if you dive on in, go ahead and unlock all the triumphs associated with the seal, you'll be able to march into the final shape with a brand new title, Brave, as well. So make sure, go ahead and get those, those big challenges bit off so that way you can handle them uh, as early as you possibly can and let the witness know that you're on the way. Uh, and we have three really, really cool things hitting on April 9th when Into the Light launches. The first one is, if you're a new player, you got a buddy who's just jumping into the game for the first time, and you'd rather not hang out with Shahan and the Cosmodrome, then you have an opportunity to go ahead and just join the front line. If you can skip the New Light campaign, give Shahan maybe a high five on the way out, ask him for a weekly bounty when you're back later, but you have a chance to go ahead and meet up with your friends, head to the Hall of Champions, grab the Gift of the Thunder Lords if you so choose, and get right ready for battle along alongside them. So you'll be able to go ahead and grab some of these new light kits as well, depending on what your subclass of choice is out of the gate. But your barriers to dive in with your friends have never been lower. There'll be a chance to go ahead and dive on into everything you're seeing within the light here. Uh, also, we have a couple more things. We have some questions in chat about this as well uh, from it Zepsky and Atlas Live TV. But on 4.9, you'll have the opportunity to also change your, what, the way your character looks. So uh, you'll be able to go ahead and change your hair if you didn't like your haircut, if you want to go ahead and change your face paint, if you want to go ahead and risk it to be one of those guardians who goes helmetless in the tower. I'm not sure if I'm brave enough, but I know many of you are. Your chance will be arriving very soon with Into the Light. Uh, and there will also be an opportunity to change your name. So Guardian4681 out there. With the launch of Into the Light, we're also going to give you one more name change token. If you already have yours sitting around, I believe you have two, but our friends in DPS will be able to answer that question for you. But you'll have that chance as well once Into the Light launches. <sighs> now, a there's a lot, but we also have one more thing for all of you. Uh, next week, we're going to be joining you again for a special developer preview of some gameplay for Destiny 2 The Final Shape. Mm -hmm. It'll be uh, here, wherever you're watching live, you'll be able to go ahead and watch it on April 9th at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, uh, where you'll get a chance to basically, again, get a look behind the scenes. The developers have been hard at work for some mm -hmm. cool stuff that you are definitely not going to want to miss. And over the course of that show, Twitch drops will be live. So they'll have, there'll be another emblem, which you can see here live on the screen, that'll be available uh, after about 15 minutes of view time. Uh, if you haven't gone ahead and also unlocked the emblems that you got as a result of this show or that we're, we're having available during the Into the Light streams, then you have a chance to go ahead and spend some more time unlocking those as well. Uh, but uh, that, that does it. Um, for starters, to all of you Guardians out there in chat, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We're thrilled about what we've been able to show off and thrilled about what the team's been working on for Into the Light. So thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, chat, we see you out there having a good time. So thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, also, it goes without saying, but we'll go ahead and do so anyway to the incredible team here at Bungie, building Into the Light, making all of this. Uh, the teams that you guys have been kind enough to represent, thank you all so much for all of your hard work. Uh, we're nothing without the entire teams that we have here. Teams are obviously greater than heroes and we're firm believers in that. And you're all great examples uh, of, of that whole scenario. Uh, to our play testers as well that have helped us bring this show to life, to Ashley, Peyton, and Michael here behind the scenes, uh, thank you so much for, for showing off some of the cool new content. And of course, all of our guests, to Tom, to Rob, to Cooley, to Willie, to Noah, to Kelsey. Uh, I'm not forgetting anyone, am I? Chris. To Chris, thank you. To the one and only yes. Mr. Chris Proctor as well. <laughs> um, thank you all for joining us. 
Uh, and now that's a uh, that is about it. So we're going to keep the stream here live until about 1130, I believe. So you can go ahead and get a little bit more time racking up the last bits of those emblems. But in the meantime, that's it for all of us here at Bungie. Oh, also, I'm sorry, to the team of producers here, yeah. everyone here Thank that you. makes this show possible, uh, they have the challenge of making me look good on camera, so obviously their work is cut out for them. Thank you all so much for helping bring this show to life. Uh, and now, finally, we're gonna go ahead and sign off and reminder into the light launches next week. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you all star side.